Joining us now, we want to bring in Michelle Schneider, MarketGage.com, a chief strategist. Michelle, it's great to have you on here again with us at Yahoo Finance. Talk to me just about how you're looking at NVIDIA results and maybe what that signals for the broader market's momentum. Well, we certainly have had uh, an interesting shift as we got through the second half so far of 2024, where tech started to underperform and we started to see some of the other sectors pick up. And that broadening out of of a rally is probably overall more positive than just a growth tech uh, stock leading. So at this point now with NVIDIA, what basically we're saying is that could shift back to a more growth environment. And so that makes me wonder how sustainable if we don't get the rest of the market to join along, if you will. So the way I'm looking at it is, yeah, I think there's great opportunity in the tech. Obviously, NVIDIA through 150, that was an area that we were looking at to clear. Um, And some of the other tech stocks that have been lagging might be interesting. Like, for example, right here at home, Intel would be one that we're watching. But as far as the rest of the market, I still have major keen eyes on the consumer sector because that has been in this consolidation for 10 months now, more than 10 months, tried to break out and didn't. And I think if we really want to see the future of where we're going overall in everything, we have to see how the consumer responds to the possibility of higher inflation and higher rates. And so for the most consumer sensitive parts of the market, what do you what would the trade be around some of those names right now, especially looking out to some of those larger catalysts that you just mentioned, Michelle? Well, we can see the trend right now. Walmart and Costco did very, very well in their earnings, and they're both obviously expressing concerns about tariffs next year and having to pass those costs on to the consumer. So, you know, the big box stores like that have really attracted a higher um, income shopper where they used to go more higher discretionary like uh, Louis Vuitton. We're seeing them going to Costco and Walmart. And so the lower class uh, shoppers where we saw, you know, tremendous uh, Dollar Tree losses, et cetera, are suffering. So we have to kind of balance it out. So I think that's why I like, Brad, to really look at the ETF XRT, because it's that wonderful balance between consumer staples and consumer discretionary. And that is the most exciting thing to me right now, because if you look at it, it hasn't been above 80 and it hasn't been below 70 for over 10 months. So that's why I don't think it necessarily means that you have to watch one store over another. Obviously, Target was dismal this week. And I know today uh, Ross is coming out. That'll be interesting because that's another one of those sort of middle of the road type stores. But if you look at XRT and we can get through this 80, uh, it doesn't really matter what anybody says in terms of the impact on the consumer. I think that would be a very good sign for getting into 2025. Michelle, I'm, I'm getting even more of, and, and we are in our newsroom, getting even more of the outlooks for next year. And we're starting to get some of the S&P 500 projections as high as 6,600. And I mean, there's, there's a wide range of outcomes because of some of the multiple unknowns that still have yet to come to fruition. With that in mind, how, how wide of a range should investors really be positioning their portfolio for going into 2025? Well, I still think that you can't dismiss getting having a position in the metals, by the way, which, of course, is completely different from the S&P 500. But what we can see is that gold is still acting a little bit like a flight to safety. Obviously, if we remove Bitcoin from the equation, because that's running on its own fumes. But in terms of the S&P 500, you know, we have to realize that the market always likes to go up. And it's always in a hopeful state of going up until reality sets in, which, of course, then has a setback. And then the degree of the setback depends on how much of the reality. So we have to watch some of these realities that right now are still on the back burner, like the geopolitical situation, like what happens with tariffs, like really what the Federal Reserve does with interest rates. And so essentially, I think that at this point, we can see time march on positively positively. 
But that's why I don't like to make a projection. What I rather say is you stay with the momentum and you stay with the trend, but you have to think more actively as an investor and realize that if you're not willing to sit through any kind of potential downturn, you take your profits along the way, you have your trailing stops. But at this point, you can't deny that everything looks positive, but I'm going to go back to my initial statement. Watch that consumer sector, because I really believe that that's going to rule the overall sentiment next year. All right. I'm just going to walk around with a mirror then, because I am that consumer. Michelle Schneider, who's the MarketGage.com <laughs> chief strategist. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you so much.